Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Batwoman Season 2 Review Series and today I am going to be talking about Episode 8, Survived Much Worse, which I have just finished watching and in my opinion I would say this was one of the strongest episodes of Season 2 so far and this was also the first time that an episode was not set in Gotham City so that's made for a very interesting change of scenery and this was the first time that an episode was actually set on an island because we've never really seen that in the Batwoman series so far so that was cool to see and also we had several story arcs all running side by side but you didn't get the feeling that everything was just overcrowded it was all part of one bigger picture so I like that a lot and as we all know over the course of season two we have seen Ryan Wilder is dealing with being affected by kryptonite after Thomas Elliot blasted her at the beginning of season two so she's been dealing with the effects of being blasted by kryptonite and she is essentially dying you know we start seeing her coughing up blood and spitting out blood and as we saw that they are looking for the Desert Rose and unless they find it, Ryan Wilder will essentially die. And we've also learned that Kate Kane is being held captive somewhere on the island because as we all remember at the beginning of Season 2, Kate Kane's plane crashed in Gotham City but she was nowhere to be found. So all of the first half of Season 2 is essentially about looking for Kate Kane because as we all know Ruby Rose has already left the show so it's been very interesting to see how they're going to get around the Kate Kane question whether or not she's actually alive so that was cool to see but this was a really good episode I really enjoyed this one a lot and as I said this was probably one of season two's strongest episodes to date I really enjoyed this one a lot so with that all said let's get right into it let's talk about episode 8 survived much worse so at the beginning of the episode we see Ryan and Alice individually write diary entries to Kate Kane Ryan is worried that she's going to die soon and Alice is planning to kill her for revenge Ryan tells Mary about her plans to go to Coriana kill Alice and get the desert rose now we all know the reason why Ryan wants to kill Alice is because she blames Alice for the death of her mother who was murdered at the hands of the rabbit gang so Ryan is on a mission to basically take out Alice and that's one of the main reasons why she took up the mantle of Batwoman so we see Luke provides Sophie with the tracking information for Alice's location which helps her realize that he's working with Batwoman had a feeling that was going to be figured out eventually I mean come on you're a cop you should know by now so the two of them then learn that Alice faked Ocean's death to get Kate back and Sophie agrees to travel to Coriana and gets the desert rose for Batwoman Sophie and Jacob are kidnapped by the many arms of death which makes Ryan decide to inject herself with adrenaline to give her enough strength to go to Coriana even if it prolongs her death in the process Ryan suits up as Batwoman and Luke gives her the technology to temporarily knock out the power on Corona. Ryan then questions what happens to the Batwoman mantle if she finds Kate and tells Mary that if she does die she's trusting her to take care of her plants. Luke gets Ryan a flight to Coriana on a mail carrier plane which leads to multiple jokes about a bat plane, a bat sub and even a little Batman 66 reference about shark repellent spray. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan also reveals that she's never been on a plane before but she manages to successfully halo jump down to Coriana's surface all the while activating the EMPs to disable the electricity and accidentally knock out the comms in the batsuit in the process we then see Ryan is then captured by a bunch of Sapphire's assassins Alice brings Ocean's body to Sapphire who tells Alice that she had a tracker on her person Meanwhile, Jacob and Sophie are also held captive by Titana, and Titana tells Sophie that Sophia wants her to join the many arms of death because she argues that the crows and her them are both equally dangerous. The electricity in Sophie and Jacob's restraints go off, and they get the upper hand and manage to escape. 
Sophia suggests that Alice's desire to kill Kate is rooted in more than just revenge, but Alice refuses to change her mind. It's kind of funny that, you know, Alice wants Kate back, but at the same time, she wants to kill her, and, you know, she doesn't want anyone else to kill her. She, you know, it's kind of like the Joker with Batman goes, nobody gets to kill Batman but me, and it's kind of the same here with Alice. It's like, no, no one gets to kill Kate but me. Even though she's my sister and I want her back, I only want her back because I want to kill her myself. So it's kind of interesting to see Alice wrestle with that. So like, I want to kill her, but I want her back at the same time. So we see the assassins arrive with Ryan who mentions that Ocean's corpse is a fake and Sophia locks up both Ryan and Alice where Alice realises that Batwoman is dying and placed the tracker on her. Ryan argues that Alice doesn't really want to kill Kate, she just wants her back and she also understands that Alice is also a victim of the circumstances that have surrounded her. Sophia shows up and offers Alice and Batwoman their respective goals. The desert rose for Ryan and Kate for Alice. The only f thing that Sophia will only give to Alice if she kills Ocean for real and she ultimately does but in order to rescue Kate not to her kill her. Sophia then brings Alice to Kate but just finds an empty room filled with replicas of Kate's necklace because Sophia was lying the whole time. Meanwhile Tatana watches over Batwoman and reveals she'll only bring her a desert rose after Sophia is done with Alice. We then see back in Gotham, Luke and Mary are attacked by one of the many arms of death and the ensuing fight accidentally damages Ryan's plant and mixes it with the assassin's blood. As they escape, Julia Pennyworth, yeah she's back everyone, suddenly returns out of nowhere and helps completely take out the assassin. Julia then tells Luke and Mary that they definitely found Kate's remains washed up outside of Bloodhaven. Yep, got a Nightwing reference there and she is definitely dead. Later, Sophia and Tatana revive Ocean, who actually didn't die because the blade Alice stabbed him with was hit with the Desert Rose. Clever. Sophia then accuses Tatana of orchestrating Alice's return to Coriana, killing the Wonderland gang, sending the malicious notes and stabs her. As Alice is taken away by Sophia's goons, she sets up the crops of Desert Rose ablaze. At the same time, Sophie finds Batwoman, who confirms to her that Kate never was on Coriana. Sophie tries to help Batwoman back to Gotham, but Ryan argues that she isn't strong enough and asks her to be by her side when she dies. Sophie gets a phone call from Mary and Luke, who realise they actually do have a cure, that it is the Desert Rose, which was grown out of Ryan's plant. And the last shots we see is we see someone chained up in shackles in a cell, with a disfigured face all wrapped up in bandages wearing Kate Kane's necklace and that pretty much ends the end of episode 8 on a massive cliffhanger. Overall, excellent episode, really enjoyed this one a lot and you know it looks like Kate Kane is alive because we see someone sitting there in the cell in chains and shackles completely burns so it's going to be interesting how they're going to address that in the next episode. And also, I thought Alice setting the entire Desert Rose crop was very Joker-like. It was almost like her way of saying, well, if no one, if I can't have the Desert Rose, then no one else can. So she just sets it on fire because she can. So that was really cool. But yeah, this episode was really, really good. I really enjoyed this one a lot. And as I said, one of season two's strongest episodes to date. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how all of this is going to play out in episode 9. So there you have it guys. I'm going to wrap it up now. What did you think of episode 8? Did you enjoy it? Do you think Ryan Wilder will die? Or do you think Mary and Luke will eventually get to the Desert Rose cure to her in time? And what about the person who is sitting in the cell all burnt and in shackles and chains? Is it Kate Kane? And if so, what actually happened to her? You know what to do guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below and I will see all of you next time for another edition of the Batwoman Season 2 Review Series where I'll be talking about Episode 9. So until next time, take care everybody and stay safe and thanks for listening.